Hi everybody, it is Connor. We are back here with another press conference reaction. This video, as always, is sponsored by IPM Group UK. These guys do all of your CCTV bits, all of your security bits as well. Keep it in the Leeds United space, everybody. Rick and the gang do a fantastic job, but without any further ado, let's get into this press conference. So on the channel, what we're trying to do most weeks for you guys is just give you a little bit of a quick update on exactly what's been said, injury-wise, transfer-wise, and of course, generally. Now, this press conference specifically did annoy some Leeds fans because the Nationals got in very, very early on and we're asking Daniel Farker some questions about Tommy Tuchel. Now, Thomas Tuchel, we've not really spoken about it on this channel because we're a little bit specifically focused on Leeds United, one Leeds fan channel, but Tommy Tuchel has been appointed as England manager. The German will be coming in and setting sail in the next couple of months, of which I'm really happy about. I don't want to go on too much about the general side of it, as I've mentioned, but Tommy Tuchel, top coach, and as Daniel Daniel Farker quite rightly said, a countryman of his, but has won pretty much everything. Guided PSG to the Champions League final, of which they've never done before, as won the French Cup, the French League, you know, the German Cup, etc., etc., and has won the Champions League with Chelsea. So a German with very good credentials, and as DF was saying in his press conference, he's linked up with him at Dortmund too, which is a nice little link. Now, something else as well, which you guys might see on the thumbnail, I'm not sure whether or not to put it on or, or not. I don't know what I'm going to do when it comes to this press conference thumbnail. But interestingly enough, there's been a lot of discussion around about Red Bull and Jurgen Klopp. Klopp wanted to take a step back from management after leaving Liverpool. And interestingly, that's why there wasn't really a link between Klopp and England. But he seems to have gone into the hierarchy of Red Bull. Now, Klopp's role does revolve around looking at the managerial stance, looking at the recruitment stance in and around Red Bull, which naturally affects... Daniel Farker. Now, Farker was asked the question of, do you think this directly affects you? And of course, Daniel Farker isn't going to say, yes, I think it does. But this will affect Daniel Farker. Apparently, what Jurgen Klopp is doing as part of Red Bull's hierarchy is looking and analysing the managerial structure involved at the franchise. One of Klopp's job roles is to look at the current managerial structure and to see if there can be improvements and that obviously does affect Daniel Farker. However, let's move on from that, everybody. We want to know about what's going on with Leeds United. What on earth has happened with the injuries? What's happening with transfers? And he did speak about that. Obviously, he was speaking about Max Verber, which seems really, really encouraging. Apparently going to be back potentially before the end of the next international break, which is around sort of mid-November, which is really good news because we thought it was going to be longer. Now, we also spoke about Elan Melier and... Melier has been under a lot of pressure, a lot of issues, obviously, when it comes to what's happened with him and the Sunderland drop and all that sort of stuff. Now, he also spoke about Elan Melier and the problems that he's had to face mentally. Is he okay? Has this affected him big time confidence-wise? We've seen Darlow go off and do okay. Excuse me, keeping a clean sheet and all this sort of stuff. Will this affect Elan Melier? It doesn't look like it has done. And what I will say about Elan Melier is he must have quite a bit of resolve anyway because... He's been through this before. What we do know is Melee has made some mistakes before. We're all very aware of that. And that's why the conversation has come up in this international break of could Carl Darlow co come in? Could we look at alternatives? Has he made mistakes this glaringly bad before? There's a conversation there to be had. I didn't expect Yelan Melee to be confidence stricken for this fixture against Sheffield United. I didn't expect Leeds to apply any pressure as well to that position. Because the manager has said he's vice-captain, he said he's the best goalkeeper in the league, and apparently Leeds United had a, a pretty much 15 to 20 million bounty on his head by De Zerbi and Marseille in the summer. You're expecting this guy to be number one for the foreseeable. I didn't expect that to be any different, to be honest. And apparently the confidence issues, all this was quelled really in week one. So Farker was also speaking about Ethan Ampadu, was also speaking about Eli Gruev, and almost confirming what we all knew, that this is going to be a very dull period when it comes to these two being involved. And that led us on to the transfers. Now, Cheku Kiate has been the name on many Leeds fans' lips, as I mentioned in the videos. He's been what we've been discussing throughout the entire international break, really, seven to ten days, of which has been encompassed by this guy and the rumours surrounding him. So Daniel Farquhar was quite unequivocally sure that Leeds are exploring alternatives. And we've spoken on this channel about Edouard Michu, we've spoken about Francis Coquelin, and we've spoken about Czech Kiate, really been the only three who fit the profile. Farquhar did keep mentioning that word, profile 
but they fit the profile of what we kind of need. Maybe Mishu a little bit differently. Mishu is more of a central midfielder, so you might have to bring two other players into that midfield three to cover him and to make that a little bit solid. Whereas if you just have a defensive midfielder in Coquelin and Kiate, you can just play that d- double pivot. But what Farka was saying is they're in the market and there may be movement in the next couple of days. Now, for me, that signifies that it is Cechu Kiate. It feels like there's been maybe maybe negotiation on the side of Leeds and the side of Kiate and his agent. We know nowadays there can be more than one agent involved. There can be more, more than one representative. So that might be playing a part in this. But it does feel like with someone like Cechu Kiate, Farker was talking around it. He said he doesn't like to talk on players when they haven't signed for the club. But to say that there's going to be movement in the next couple of days, the sort of off-the-cuff noise is that Leeds have been interested in Kiate. He's been at Thorpe Arch. She's been, you know, effectively look, being looked at. So for that to just be completely quelled and for Leeds to go for another option, a left-field option, I feel would just be quite unusual. But this can happen in football, and we all know that. But they're the three players of which we kind of feels like we fit our profile. And Daniel Farker did keep mentioning that word of profile, which is really, really interesting because I think it's got to be Kiate. Or really, once again, looking at that word profile, it's got to be someone like Francis Coquelin. And either or, I think, improve Leeds United's chances. I think they give us a little bit more balance, a little bit more structure. They make the double pivot a little bit more regimented and rigid because you've got an attacking player and you've got a defensive player in there, which is only going to help the structure when it comes to Daniel Farker's side. So, obviously, the other thing that we needed to talk about, everybody, is injuries. He spoke about, obviously, Verba being back a little bit earlier. He did speak about Dan James as well being sort of ready for this one and man or Solomon, which is really good news for Leeds United. But he did speak about Joe Rodon being on four yellow cards. He did speak about Pascal Straub having that sort of continuous injury that he does per season. You look at you look at Pascal, it's sort of 10 to 12 games he misses per season. He did address that. Clearly, key things that the backroom staff, the medical staff, the physios have all been discussing with Daniel Farker in terms of getting reinforcements in and exploring that free market. So I believe that Leeds are probably going to do stuff in that free market. We've kind of got three games in a very short space of time. I believe it's Sheffield United, Watford and Bristol City. So within that period, you're expecting Leeds to do something, but it's going to have to be done quickly with Watford just around the corner. So it feels like we're in a very, very similar position as to what we thought we were going to be in before the press conference. We know that James is back. We know that Solomon's back. We know that obviously Ampadu and Greve are out for a long period of time. And we kind of know that Leeds are being explorative in that free agent market, but haven't got anything done yet. So there's nothing remarkable that's come out of that, everybody. But it is good to hear from the horse's mouth, if you will, and Daniel Farker, that Leeds are looking at options. I think that is big because the rumours, there is no smoke without fire, I feel. And the rumours have been kind of circulating around Daniel Farker's Leeds United about free agents. I didn't want him to come in today and quell all those rumours. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Fascinated to hear what you think on this press conference. Did you find out anything new? Are you encouraged now that Leeds United are going to be going into Sheffield United with a little bit more vigour? I have to say you did speak on George Baldock as well. We have to touch on that. The uh, Greece right back, full back, just general maestro at championship level. And, and it was, you know, he, he had some real nice sentiments and, and, and words for him as well. Baldock, it's going to be a very emotional night, I feel, on both sides. I think there's got to be a level of respect from Leeds United for George Baldock and uh, for Sheffield United in general. Wilder, it's going to be a tough night for him, obviously, after working with him for six or seven years. So, yeah, um, it's going to be it's going to be an emotional night, I feel, especially for the the red half of Yorkshire there in Sheffield United. So it was good that he touched on that, the sentiment, and and hopefully George Baldock gets the send-off that he deserves as well on Friday night. So that's been it from me, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, press conference reaction, this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below on transfers, on everything else. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. A big thank you for all of you for us hitting 40,000 subscribers. Uh, we've reached, I think we've got managed to get 10,000 subscribers in about 18 months, which is unbelievable growth for the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. hope you're noticing the differences in the channel as well which i'm trying to do to to get a little bit of improvement out there you know uh, and i think that's helping we've got some big announcements coming as well in the next week but make sure you're checking out the patreon make sure you're getting involved in the latest football prizes uh, stuff everybody as well link in the description below for that one it's been an absolute pleasure and i'll see you in a bit cheers